Good morning and welcome again to another great footy show coming to you out of Channel 44 in Geelong on a Saturday morning. And yes, we are excited. The footy is going along very, very nicely. We've just got past round four and last week some big games in Galoo. Those mighty Hawks, they finally had a win and they were too good for the Belmont Lions with Reese Millard kicking six goals, a magnificent effort there. Bell Postel, the, uh, the boys from the Ring Road Recreation Reserve, much too good for East Geelong. Joel Page booting four for them. Uh, the Duck Pond boys, Werribee Centrals, they come into some ripper form. Too good for the Cry Devils. Braden Smith, best on the ground for the Ducks and did a fantastic job indeed. The North Geelong Magpies going along very, very nicely. And yes, the big fella is getting very, very excited about the whole thing at the moment. Got to keep a lid on it though. Paul Briggy kicking six goals. He's got 20 for the year so far. Five goals a game. That's not a bad average. And Justin de Blasio once again, one of the best players for the North Geelong Magpies. The Tommy Tigers. Absolutely blitzed the boys from the gun club. Lucas Forbes and Brett McLeod played a tag team game, kicking 10 goals each. 20 goals out of their 29 in two players. That's got to be some sort of a record in local footy. That's fantastic. And the 94.7 match of the day was the Anarchy Roos. They were too good for the Bannockburn Tigers. And Jake Pittman, Jason Pitt, I'll start again. Anyway, Pitt, he was best on the ground. For Anarchy, oh, the big fella's tongue tied. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Hello, I am Dick Philpott, and once again, I have assembled some of the biggest names and brains in country football to eradicate, adjudicate, communicate. Definitely not procrastinate. And of course, the man who needs absolutely no introduction whatsoever, the number one broadcaster in country football, Eric Nichols. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Dick. I almost got lost in the rain this morning, and I'm not looking forward to this afternoon, I can assure you. Yeah, it was, I swear it was sunny when I drove in this morning, but never mind. Funny things happen in footy. And the man, of course, the uh, the number one duck himself, direct from the duck pond, Grubby Cations. G'day, Grubby. How you going, mate? Yeah, I'm very well, Dick, and I can just give you a little bit of advice from down in Werribee, mate. It's about 42 <laughs> degrees down there. Sunny, beautiful. I don't know what I've come into here, mate. Yeah, any time it's 42 in Werribee, it gets a little bit on the bugle up there sometimes. I never mind about that. That's another story indeed, folks. Now, at a big game last Saturday, of course, the Anarchy Roos, too good for Bannockburn Tigers. Eric Nichols, or might have been Grubby Cations, actually, he caught up with... The big man himself, Mr McDonald, the coach of the Anarchy Roos, after the game. Here they go. A little bit surprised about the result, but very surprised about the way you went about it. In the finish, a huge win. And I, I don't know where that come from, but obviously your form's been good till now. Yeah, our form, we've had a couple of big wins, and um, our Thompson form was really good. We just lost it in the last quarter, and um, I suppose when Belpo still got beat by Thompson, we thought our form was pretty good. And to come out here and win it, at Bannockburn, which we haven't won for 11 years out here, apparently. It was a huge win. Yeah. Well, it was a huge win, and I don't normally like to dwell on individual performances, but young Luke Wilson, where did you get him from? Well, it's his first year of senior footy. He ran around the twos last year and um, just didn't get the opportunity. Um, they rucked him a little bit in the senior games and just brought him off and put a lot of work into him and he's been dominating every game we've played. He's flying, yeah. Now, there's, there's probably not a real lot to work on on that because your forwards won all day, your backmen were just far too strong and, of course, in the ruck and, and your on-ball division probably blew Bannockburn away and their pace is usually a, a, a real thing for them and you actually stopped their pace and were just too good from through the middle. Yeah, their, their foot skills were extremely good early and that was, that's what hurt us early in the game, but we knew that with our run and um, carry of the ball that eventually we'll, they wouldn't keep that kicking up for the whole game. And um, yeah, our run, really work on our handball and run through the midfield and close, so we knew as the game went on we'd get the win. Yeah. Now, very, very tough game out at Anarchy next week. How will you go? Well, it's um, Anarchy's past players day next um, Saturday and we're at home against North Geelong and we're going to be competitive all year. So if our players have the attitude like they did today, very disciplined, just did everything I told them. If they keep doing that, and the good thing is injury-free again. So that's the key to us, just being injury-free, keeping our best players on the um, field. We'll be competitive next week and that's all we, we want to do. We're aiming for that fifth spot on the ladder. Um, that's our goal. Anarchy hasn't been there for a while. Reserves were there last year and... The guys want a taste of it this year. Yeah. Well, I think they probably should have made it last year, and you've definitely improved their side this year. And, look, a fantastic win today. All the best for the rest of the year. And I think your goal of fifth, you might go a little bit higher than that if you can perform like you did today. Thanks, mate. Thank you. And thanks to all the players, people out here today. And we'll go back to the studio and the biggest, fattest, ugliest bloke on TV, Dick Philpott. He's a funny little man, folks, isn't he? I hope <laughs> none of you are laughing at home. 
because he really gets away with it sometimes. I'm going to get out and belt him in a minute live on television. That'll be something to see. But what was all that about? Well, actually, don't worry about what that was about because we've got something else in store for uh, you, mate. Now, we believe we've run into your brother doing some sports commentary over the years. Oh, <laughs> and... <laughs> Well, now, you, I think he's your brother. Oh, oh look out. <laughs> look out. Hey, big man, Phil Pot. Still, have a look at it. Oh, jeez, I wouldn't mind being as skinny as that, actually. <laughs> That's actually a compliment to you. Oh, hello. 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 I don't remember them. No, they're fair enough. All right, you absolute fool. He's a fool, folks. Like, no notice we There was a big occasion out at the East Geelong Belpo Still Reserves game. A couple of the legends of football were out there doing a bit of goal. I'll probably have a look at a bit of a, a footage coming up here. Now, there's Andy Wabowski. He's the chairman of football. Do have a look at him? He looks all right in an orange jacket too, doesn't he? Do you know what? He's, he's on the roadworks there, is it? They use orange flags, do they? No, it's how long since I've been watching the footy. They really have orange flags? <laughs> yeah, of course they do. Fantastic. And there's Brendan Beveridge. He's 94. He's doing a great job. I tell you what, oh. have, a, have a look at the action there. What's that? Right arm over the wicket. Look, he's faster than the players. It's unbelievable. Now, there's another bloke up the other end coming up very shortly. And uh, I know he's going to come on the screen. I mean, don't give him to Have a look at that. Now, yeah, this is Neville. Geez, he's put a lot of exercise in that. That's Neville Whitley, the OAM chairman of Geelong District Footy League. Now, Grubby, they tell me that he belted his chest on his hand on his chest and awarded a goal. He's yeah. got no idea what's going on. Well, he's obviously been watching the footy a fair bit because, yeah, he ran across, give the old tap on the chest for a point and then decided, no, nah, no, that's a goal. And, and gave a goal. Uh. But I must add, I did go out there and have a look at him and... He copped a lot of razzing from behind the fence. Not from me. Alan Moore. Alan Moore really give it to him, and there's a, a few people around there give it to him. But he never lost concentration. He actually took it very, very seriously. And him and Andy did a, a fantastic job. Somehow East got home only just, but we're not going to blame the goal umpires <laughs> yeah, yeah. for that. But seriously, yeah. he did a great job. He did a really, they both did a really good job. We know all about that. Unbelievable. Gee, now, that's fantastic. Now, you might have another vocation coming up. That's <laughs> just an amazing effort. They tell me he's, uh, it's good to see Alan Moore behind the goals because Alan doesn't really get out in the wind. He's a very protective over his hair. We call him Gossamer out at North Geelong, the Gossamer kid, or Jerry Springer. Maybe he's watching the show because he's going to belt me now. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, well, that was fantastic. Bit of fun on the show anyway, folks. We're going to take a short break and pay some bills now. And when we come back, we have a very, very special guest on the show. We've got Mitch Cleary doing the Colts. And uh, we're going to talk about all the action on this afternoon in footy. Back after this. We are the Raiders from all around you long. I'm going to tell you our football. And welcome back. I still haven't forgiven Grubby either. Those nasty comments he made and those things he put up on a screen in the last segment either, but yeah, have a look at him, will you? Mr. Innocence, I tell you what, I tell you what. Got the, plenty of duck jokes coming up later in the season, folks. Don't you worry about that. Well, of course, it's time now. A segment every Saturday morning. It's Mitch Cleary talking about everything that is Colts footy in Geelong. Here's Mitch. Thanks, Dick. Well, it was a landmark week for football in Geelong with the new Colts division releasing its four divisions for season 2012. The 36 teams participate for the first time this morning, with teams eager to show their wares against the region's best. As we turn to Division 1 and 10 teams to participate this season, five, five GFL clubs have dropped out while three Ballerine clubs have entered for the first time. Torquay joins Ocean Grove and Drysdale this morning, who play with the Grubbers to take on the Hawks. Both have been strong in the BFL under 18s for some time this, and this morning have a chance to make inroads against their close rivals. As we move across to Division 2, this morning with eight teams to participate, two GDFL sides have made the cut to the region's second best under-18s Colts division with Werribee Centrals and Bannockburn. The Centurions travel to St Normans this morning, a ground it only knows as a GDFL grand final and finals venue, the Centurions to take on the Super Saints. As we move across to Division 3, with ten teams to participate, a number of clubs having their second side in this competition. North Shore is the only GFL A side to, to play in Division 3. It, while an intriguing match takes place this morning for GDFL fans between Belmont and Inverlee. And finally, in Division 4, there's eight teams to participate this morning. And a match to keep your eye on is between Grovedale, Twos, who are participating for the first time this season, and Cario. That's all for Colts this week. Be sure to catch me next week. But for now, it's back to you, Dick. 
Thanks very much, Mitch. And of course, Mitch will be back again next Saturday morning talking everything that's Colts footy right here in Geelong. Now, I said before the break, we had a very special guest on the show this morning, and we certainly have, because a big day out at Footrod Flats today. The Attic Roos taking on the North Geelong Magpies at a big pass players day. And I thought it would be a great opportune time to get the great man himself in here. And the son of a, a very close friend of mine. He, we were both presidents, opposing presidents of North Geelong and Anarchy back in the 90s when we were both great, making grand finals all the time. And, of course, I speak of uh, the man himself, Andrew Tommy Tucker. Good morning, Andrew. Thank you, Dick. Can I call you? It's better, would you rather me call you Andrew or Tommy? Uh, well, a lot of people know me as both, so whatever you like. Tommy probably really Tommy, is what yeah, know I think, his football name more, I think. And... I know you better as Tommy, that's <laughs> right. Now, how long have you been president for out there now? Uh, last year and this year. Yep, so, um, and your dad was president for quite a few years, yeah, wasn't I think, he? I think dad did it for about 13 odd years, I think, all told, 12, 13 years, I think it is. So the, the, the Tucker family has a tremendous connection with the Yannicky Footy Club, and I know your, your sister Helen, she's on the committee. Yep. And um, any other, is Kim, your wife, is she on the committee too? No, she's not this year, no, she was last year. What, she doesn't feel like getting involved with football? We've got to have a drag <laughs> in her, haven't we? <laughs> no, what are you doing? No, no, it's, uh... <laughs> no, it's great. Any other family on the committee? No, oh, well, there is a few, there's a Tucker helping in the canine. Yep. But, um, well, Hel Helen's actually the uh, secretary yep. this year, which is good of her to jump, jump in and give us a hand. Now that's about it, and a few tuckers playing. Like, a couple of kick tuckers, little kids, that's about yeah. it. I heard there was plenty of tucker in the canteen too, so <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. Grubby, you've, uh, you've seen Anarchy lately, and they've certainly improved this year. Well, we'll probably get to talk about them a little bit later on, mm. but Tommy, you've picked a pretty good week to come in, because before this weekend, we may have said to you, look, where Anarchy going, but after that performance on Saturday, you must have been stoked the way they played. Yeah, I reckon it was really good disciplined footy, which we haven't had for a long time. I reckon Scotty's doing a real good job, the blokes. So obviously listening to him, he's got a very good um, team structure, I reckon, going on Scotty, and the blokes have obviously enjoying that football that he's making him play, and it just looks good. We've got a few young kids that have come through our reserves, and they're standing up a bit, I reckon, you know. Mate, I, I did interview Scotty McDonald on Saturday, yep. and look, he, he really, really impressed me. Gibbsy impressed me last yep. year, and, and Scotty McDonald might take his one step further, but one of the questions I did ask him, Luke Wilson in the ruck, where do you find big blokes like that? Where'd you get in? Well, he played reserves last year, and I think he actually started in the grand final on the bench, and actually Daryl Bissett came up to me before the end of the year, and he said, we must sign this kid. So Daryl obviously knows his football. He said sign this young kid because he's going to be a very good footballer so you can't get big kids as we all know you can't get tall blokes and mm. he's going very well you it's know. Certainly he better run in the seconds on Saturday. Yes he is and he'll, he'll, he'll run in the seconds and he'll do the running for the seniors. I don't know how he does it, he's a better man than me anyway but he's a... Uh, Must be close day. to Anzac Day, I shall not worry them. <laughs> the well, I saw him whack a couple of blokes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well I would go to the old day, Welsh yeah. used to go out whacking a bloke behind the ear yeah. every five minutes, that was unbelievable. Yeah. I always remember a day at an and I've always had a lot of fun, a lot of camaraderie, oh, that's what I love about local yeah. footies, a camaraderie and everything and I always remember going at there once and I was giving them a bit of a, a bit of a bag across the fence and, and uh, Welsh was playing yeah. that stage then for Anarchy and Darrell of course and camera right over and I think uh, even Cor Big Corey was playing and, and uh, Neville Gogol, you know, all the, all the characters of footy and of course Anarchy won of course and as I was coming off the ground I was looking a bit sheepish which is pretty hard for me to look sheepish face, I can tell you and uh, all of a sudden the whole team just turned around and bared their, uh, their, their buttocks at me and uh, Welsh was the leader of that I might add and it was one of the funny, I must admit one of the funniest things I've ever seen in football. <laughs> and it just goes to show, we have a bit of fun across the fence, but at the end of the day, we all enjoy each other's company and have a nice, quiet beer. But, um, so, the junior program, yep. big thing at any gear the moment. Yeah, it is. Uh, we, well, we've got to under 18s and a half. We've got about um, 26 or 8 kids that, for that. But 14s, 16s, and we're, we're fielding three um, junior sides in netball. So, um, we've got kids everywhere at Anakin. We've got about 30 six or something Auskick kids, which is fantastic for any Anakin Footy Club. We're in the middle of nowhere. Mm. We've got a, actually got a bus coming over from um, Little River every Thursday night to take kids from Little River. We've got a heap of kids from Little River, so uh, it's really good. So we, we've got people everywhere, kids everywhere every Thursday and Tuesday night, which is great. I reckon that's one of the things I've always admired about Anakin, because let's be honest, you are in the middle of nowhere and yep. there's no pub. And I've always said a good <laughs> country footy club has got to have a local pub. There's no real transport out there. Because yeah, I was trying to work out how I'm going to get get out there on Sunday yep. afternoon. And they tell me the buses and the trams and the trains have stopped out there now, so can't get out there. I mean, yep. you've only just got television now, of course. Yeah, we haven't power. Yeah. Just got power on. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's a, just a credit to your club that you can attract people out to Anarchy. It's just fantastic. Yeah, when you I always say to myself, when you sit down and look at it, we're actually lucky that Anarchy Footy Club's still going. Mm. When you really look at it, how, how there's nothing, we've got nothing. Like, you know, it's, it's a great credit to our people, you know. Yep. They've, they've stuck around and stuck by us. So you've got, sorry. 
Do you think it's got something to do with the people out there? Like, you've never ever gone out to Anarchy and not had a good day out there with the people mm. at Anarchy. It's got to have some sort of... Uh, I think so. I think it's... A, we're the real country club, really, mm. left in Geelong, really, you know. It's, yeah, it's just a good atmosphere. Tommy, right? I know you've got a big afternoon this afternoon with the pass place. <laughs> I know the North Geelong people love getting out there, but I don't like I enjoy going out there anyway. <laughs> and as I said, uh, great sponges out there. That's not just the committee. <laughs> and Auntie Audrey makes some beautiful cakes out there. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you out there, my friend, and uh, yes, looking okay. forward to seeing your dad out there, your dad Noel. I, I think he'll be one of the greatest blokes in local footy and a great friend as well. Thanks, Tommy Tucker, and All good right. luck to the Energy Roos for the rest of the season. And same to you and same to North Geelong, Dick. Oh, I know you mean that with a great sincerity, Tommy. <laughs> exactly that is unbelievable. Same, you, mate. Unbelievable. <laughs> We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, get him off the screen. We're going to talk about all the footy on this afternoon. Back after this. From all around you long I'm gonna tell you how football is strong And welcome back And of course this afternoon with some big games on this afternoon And none bigger than the 94.7 match of the day The East Geelong Eagles up against the Tommy Tigers And it'll be a fantastic game indeed A little bit of uh, feeling between these two clubs We call it the local derby here in Geelong, they're just uh, near, very near neighbours, and uh, out of the Thompson Thunder, out of East Geelong uh, over, it'll be a fantastic game indeed. And of course, Eric, uh, I'll throw to you first, and there's a bit of significance about the game because yet another shield is being played for. Absolutely, Dick, and I say to Grubby, we went to uh, at least a fortnight ago, Grubby, and uh, played for the Mark Lamer Shield with Belmont Lions. Today it's the Polly Rankin Shield with uh, East Geelong and Thompson. Polly Rankin, of course, played with both clubs. Yeah, well, I didn't know Polly Rang. Was that a, a, long, a long time ago, or was it? Oh, within the last twenty odd years, I guess. Okay. Polly, Polly, it might be a bit more. Polly was uh, a bloke that I knew pretty well. And, okay. Uh, really so, nice bloke. Really so nice East bloke. Geelong have got the Mark Lomas Shield in their cupboard. We got the Mark Lomas, and they, they're looking, looking for the Polly, Polly Rankin this week. Yeah, absolutely. They need to build and, a new cabinet out there. And uh, it looks like being a crackerjack game. We've got uh, East Geelong sixth, and, and even this stage, Grubby, round five, East two and two. Thompson 4 and Nort, East can't afford to drop another one because uh, the top five might be fairly tight later in the year. Well, you would think so too, although I think they've already played Bell Post Hill as well, so they've got that one up their sleeve. But, yeah, to lose another one wouldn't be good, although I think what they can do for the rest of the year, I think they've got enough firepower there to still finish top three, even if they do drop this one. But, obviously, to get top spot, you would think they would have to win this one this week? Yes, well, uh, Thompson probably going in uh, reasonably uh, favoured because uh, a couple of weeks ago they knocked over Bell Post Hill. They take on the other grand final assist and uh, I think Thompson might nearly win, Dick. Well, there you go. It'll be a fantastic game indeed because both sides are playing some pretty good footy at the moment. So if you can't get out there, tune in at 1.30 this afternoon. 94.7 of the Pulse. You'll hear Grubby and you'll hear Eric and all the boys out there commentating on this fantastic game of local country football. Out at the ring, right, that's it there on the screen, 94.7 of the Pulse, your home of country football. Can't mistake that. Out at the Ring Road Recreation Reserve, the Bell Post Hill Panthers found a bit of form again, and they're up against the Inverley Hawks, who found a win last week out at the Winter Resort. And uh, maybe, Eric, uh, they've bounced back a little bit, but I think maybe, and I won't say to you, Eric, I'll say to Grubby, because we've got to Thank read you. our script correctly, <laughs> that I reckon that uh, this will be a hard task for the Inverley Hawks, Grub. Yeah, well, actually, I just thought I'd put on about 40 years all of a sudden, <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but... Now, look, uh, um, obviously, Balpo still had one little blemish, but they're still up and fire, and they're a pretty good side. You have a look through their best players last week, and it's the old, the old firm. They've got big Symes and uh, Shawnee Lewis, Moreland, and once those blokes get in the best players, look out the other sides. They're going to be... Very very, very hard to beat up there. Inverley, on the other hand, obviously, I think Smithy's decided, can they make the five? Maybe not even at this early stage. He's thrown a couple of kids in there. Young relative of mine, kicked a nice little goal too. Young oh. Billy Cations. Oh. He's done all right. He's uh, got to keep it all in the family. Oh. I don't think Arnie Winsome's watching. I Arnie Winsome. But, uh, <laughs> no, honestly. How he's, tall is he? Is he bigger than three foot three? No, he's only a little fella. He's only a little no. fella, but he's taller than Straight. me, which is pretty easy. But look, he's, he's been, he played very, very well in the under-18s last year. I did see him. And hopefully, Smithy will put a few more of these kids up. They've had a good lot of under-18 kids. And maybe next year or the year after. Oh, fantastic indeed. Out of the Devils playground, the Cryo Devils, they take on the Belmont Lions. And uh, Eric, a couple of sides that are struggling this year at the moment. And I guess any win at this stage of the year, round five, will be very pleasing for them. And I'd, I can't pick this one. No, it's a difficult one, Dick. And, and from what people tell me, both sides have been uh, devastated by injuries. And uh, with a lot of players missing in both sides today. You look at Belmont Lions, they've played Thompson, 
Belfast Hill and East, and they've been in the game at half time against mm. three of the top mm. sides. So I, I think they're almost uh, in line for a win today. They would be desperate out of Cry, and likewise Cry have only defeated Winchelsea, and I think uh, they'd be looking for another win. But having seen Belmont Lions in the first half against East a couple of weeks ago, they were very, very good. If they play that style, they could win today. Mm, indeed, I, I really can't pick that one at all. I might even just lean towards the Belmont Lions. I think everyone knows in football when I lean, it's a bit dangerous. Don't you worry about that. Now, out at Footrot Flats, we talked about it with uh, Andrew Tucker, the president of the Anarchy Roos, before. It is a big one out there. This nearly made match of the day status, this one. Anarchy Roos, who are really doing everything right on the footy ground this year, along with the North Along Magpies, who haven't lost a game yet. This will be a test of both sides. And uh, I'll throw to you, Grubby. Uh, not only will it be a great day on the ground, but a sensational day off the ground as well. I, you, the sponges that you see in Anarchy, and that's not just the committee, the sponges <laughs> are unbelievable. Arnie Audrey puts them out there and they're magnificent, mate. But I'll test them for you, don't worry about that. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you'd know all about sponges and sponging, Dick. But, <laughs> look, you know, and that's, obviously you'll get to the scones after you've had some of Hottie's hamburgers. As I said on Saturday, they're the best in the business. So When I go to Anarchy, I go out there, I get there a little bit early, and I go up, usually Greg Moore used to cook the hamburgers, I go out there and I get a quote. Just a quote, and then I'd come back later on and pick them up later on. Absolutely <laughs> sensational. <haven't? laughs> now, look, come on, let's talk about the yeah, right We're going to run out of time again. Yeah, right Anarchy last week were absolutely sensational. Yeah, they yeah. were sensational. I went out there thinking Bannockburn might be too good from out there at Victoria Park, but that's how much I know, because they were, they're as good as any side I've seen this year. And that includes Belpost Hill and it includes East Geelong. They yeah. were absolutely terrific. Yeah. I think the big thing out there as anarchy is, can they keep that form up? Because if they can, they will be a big player in this year's finals and they can be competitive against anybody. North Geelong, on the other hand, when I saw them at Inverleigh, they were terrific that day. So this is going to be a real tight game. Some of those blokes at anarchy that, that, that have been there a couple of years, Corey Collins, unstoppable. Um, the big fella in Luke Wilson, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Salvina, all these blokes, they were terrific. Um, North Geelong, I'm not going to comment too much on them. You know more about them than I do. I haven't seen them for about three or four weeks, but they were very good with de Blasio and big Briggy up there. Oh, anarchy by a couple of points. Yeah, I reckon it'll be a ripper game. And, of course, the big pass players day out there today, and it'll be fantastic indeed. Uh, the Geelong West Cheaters, well, their uh, season hasn't been real flash. They actually won their first game for a long time the other week against the Winchelsea Blues, but uh, this time they've got a big ask up against the Ducks, Werribee Centrals. Eric... Uh, even though the Ducks have got to come down here, it's uh, going to be a long day, I think, for the West. Unfort Jesus. Unfortunately, it might be, Dick. West, very, very pleased a couple of weeks ago, as you mentioned. First win for a couple of years, and that, that was fantastic for them. But Werribee Central's, having lost to last year's grand finalists in Belpost Hill and East, they bounced back last week with some outstanding form. And uh, I think it, well, unfortunately, it might be a percentage builder this afternoon for them. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game for the John West Cheaters, no doubt about that. Bannockburn Footy Club, well, they went down last week to Anarchy and I guess they're pretty grumpy about that and they want to bounce back out of Victoria Park. They take on the boys from the gun club and their season is, uh, well, just about all but over the way they're playing at the moment. Do you give uh, Winchelsea any chance at all, Grubby? No, I don't, but Anarchy, uh, Bannockburn last week were poor because Anarchy made them poor. Look, they've had a couple of wins against opposition that won't play finals and I think they might have got carried away with themselves a little bit. This is probably a game they don't want. They're probably better off playing at one of the better sides and really having a red-hot crack because they'll go out to Winchelsea, they'll win that well and hopefully don't get carried away for the following week. Fair enough. Well, that's about it for another Saturday morning, folks. Glad you can join us. Make sure if you're not going to the footy this afternoon, tune in to 94.7, the folks, your home of country football for the big clash for the Mark or the Polly Rankin Shield. I knew I'd get it wrong yeah. again. <laughs> the Polly Rankin Shield. It'll yeah. be a fantastic day indeed out there at the East Geelong Oval, so we get out there 1.30, it be fantastic. And of course, at 5 o'clock you get a big roundup of all the local footy scores, including the Ballerine and Football Geelong and the AFL as well. I hope you enjoyed the show this morning. Thanks again to our special guest this morning in Tommy Tucker from the Enneke Roos. I'll be out there this afternoon at Foot Rod Flats enjoying myself. You enjoy yourself in footy this afternoon, folks. See you all day next week. Bye.